So if you have joined us now, we are just discovering interesting underpaintings that we can do for our paintings. So a lot of people just throw paint at their canvas, uh, write a lot of intentions on there and that is all beautiful. Uh, but they give no thought to the color scheme or what it is that they want to do. And in the end, it can create quite a muddy background that uh, can be difficult to come back from, especially if you wanted something vibrant and colorful like I like to work. So what I like to do is to take paper out of my um, multimedia book and I just wash them with a bit of gesso, let them dry. And this allows me to work on them as if it is canvas. And then just experiment with different techniques and see how that um, relates and, and how that brings out um, you know, interesting textures and movements. I'm just going to pop around some of these to show you. Just take my press stick off there. So this one I created by um, thinning my paint quite a lot and I splattered and I used two colors that I like to work with which is uh, magenta and uh, a turquoise and then with the magenta I added a lot of zinc white to it and also with the turquoise so that it's a little bit more pastel and then before these droplets dried I used my brush and I added a lot of water and I diluted some of these zones, blending them into each other, allowing them to run into each other. So that can also be an organic and very interesting background. Everything doesn't have to be extremely dark. This one, I like to sometimes play with uh, a rainbow color. It's just who I am. <laughs> All the colors of the rainbow is my favorite. But it can be quite jarring, it can be quite oh, in your face. So one way to calm this very intense use of colors down is to give it uh, a, a wash of zinc white. Zinc white is, or Chinese white, is very translucent, as you can see. And what I then did was I played with organic shapes. And I first drew in some shapes randomly, um, just playing with my canvas. And then at the end, I used a wash of white, titanium white, to connect all the spaces between these organic shapes. And that quieted the background down quite a lot. But that could be quite interesting to now have a Buddha face drawn over this section. Another one that I did was um, just to play with my brushes in my brush kit and then also to see what marks I can make with my brushes. I think a lot of artists don't spend nearly enough time just playing in the studio and your art journal or a sheet of watercolor paper or whatever the case may be, this is multimedia paper, it's not too expensive, I have a whole book of them. Um, is where I go to to experiment so I can play it doesn't take a lot of time and I, I do use the time to take brushes that I have and to see what marks can I make with it what is the thickest line I can draw with it what is the thinnest line I can draw with it what interesting shapes can I create with this brush um, is it controlled is it loose that kind of thing. So every time you purchase a new brush, make it an exercise to welcome it to your brush family and to initiate it on a piece of paper with some of your favorite colors and just play and see what interesting shapes you can create. Another thing I like to do in my paintings is drips. Drips is really just diluted paint that you use a pipette or your brush and you connect it at the top of your canvas and the minute you hold your pipette there you drop it and the color runs all the way through. But I think sometimes a lot of artists do these things. It's not groundbreakingly news to everybody. You might have you might use these techniques yourself a lot. But I find a lot of artists do drips or splattering uh, or that kind of thing. But they limit themselves. You can really create a whole entire painting out of techniques like this and really be far more intentional by using that design principle of repetition and rhythm um, until you have filled the entire canvas with that. So it becomes far more powerful of a statement on your underlying um, 
painting than it is just here and there and then it disappears in the end especially if you're going to be using heavy body paint over everything one of my other favorite things i like to do is just to use tissue paper and some gel medium um, to adhere it to my paper it gives me beautiful texture and patterns of tissue paper or serviettes that i use we're going to be playing with that today as well and then just to do a color wash over to harmonize and unify everything before i start to really work on my main design here i've spent a bit of time also just to give you a bit of an idea of where i'm headed i used a single color i used a turquoise ink on my paper and at first i diluted it quite a bit and my very first layer is very translucent as you can see there and i just created a large interesting organic shape and i allowed it to dry and then i added another layer of the same ink but on a different angle and created a different shape on top of that so there is a, a law of color especially translucent color color on color goes darker so this is about 12 or 15 layers of ink and with each subsequent layer I would make the internal shape smaller and smaller and smaller until in the end here is about three or four layers of ink over each other creating that depth that you can see over there and then I just added some gold leaf to that in my play and then afterwards I just came in with some charcoal um, just to give you an idea of how I could draw on a Buddha face on this exercise. So you can see really how a single color can be a masterful first underpainting or freedom layer um, to create interesting texture. And then you can just begin to do the shadowing over that. So that is quite an exciting one to play with, especially on a big scheme like this. So this is one of my biggest weapons. Um, I know that a lot of self-taught artists might roll their eyes at a color wheel, but it is an important tool because if you use this properly, it can really help take your art to the next level. Really understanding color and your color choices and then uh, using that as um, a jump off point can really help you to achieve beautiful success on your paintings. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this, but I am going to demonstrate to you one of my color choices. And this is actually called a tetriot. A tetriot is using four colors that is uh, complementary um, to each other on the color wheel. So today I'm going to be using a blue violet and one of its friends is a red orange. Another friend of this is a yellow orange and also then a blue green so i've pre-mixed some of my color here and i've also mixed some what is it called some tints a tint of a color is when you've added a lot of white to your color that you've chosen uh, i've also got some um, tones a tone is when you add gray to your color and I've also mixed shades. A shade is when you add a bit of black to your color. Now for today's demonstration, I'm going to be using a dagger brush, which looks like this. So it's quite rounded there. And then it comes to a point. So it's a little bit more rounded than uh, an angle brush. And it gives you a little bit more of a, a random um, movement with the bristles, if you so want. Another secret of mine is I use these little sauce cups that I get from a plastic store to pre-mix my colors in and also to dilute my colors down to uh, a consistency that is easy to deliver to the canvas so that I don't spend so much time with thick body paint, especially when your canvas is freshly prepared. I know that you guys can notice that sometimes the color doesn't stick to it too well. How are you guys doing? So I'm going to start here with my blue violet, blue purple, which is two parts ultramarine, oh not ultramarine, sorry, phthalo blue to one part dioxazine purple. 
and then I have just added some gel medium to it and a bit of water. So what I do is I come to a point and then I twist my brush to its broader side and then I would continue my line and twist it back to its most vertical placement and work this through all the way to the end of my canvas. So in doing this I'm creating an interesting movement of colour. The next colour is my blue-green hue, that is my turquoise. I'm just going to do a few of these so you guys can get an idea. Doing the same with my blue-green. But now I might start here at a place where there's a thin line. And then when I get to a part where there's a thick aspect of it, then I'll switch to a thinner line. And then continue to repeat that all the way down. So I've done something similar to the Buddha painting that is in the workshop. but a little bit different. Then switch to the red orange. When you switch to a new color, make sure that you thoroughly rinsed your brush so that you don't contaminate your color. Now these colors of mine are quite runny, but like I said, it was done with an intention. And the red orange is a mixture of cadmium red, one part cadmium red, three parts cadmium orange. And then I've also added some gel medium and some water to improve the fluidity. So there was a question earlier, uh, one of the people that has bought, I think it was Lori, asked if she doesn't, if she can't get acrylic ink at her local store, um, is that going to be a major problem for the painting because it is in the materials list? No, not at all. You can dilute your full bodied acrylic paint with water and add a bit of acrylic um, medium to it. I'm using Montmartre which is an Australian um, brand but you can see this is quite a liquid you can hear it so this is acrylic medium and I love using this for all kinds of stuff but this will ensure that you don't um, lose your paint's ability to adhere to the canvas because you're diluting it so much my last color here is a yellow orange which is cadmium yellow Three parts cadmium yellow, one part cadmium orange, and also my gel medium and water. Let's add that one there. So because blue and orange is complementary colors, it also gives you contrast. So this is already a design element at work here. So now I'm going to add some tints. So a tint is like I said where I've added white to my main color and this is the blue violet with a lot of white added to it. I'm going to add that there. Go 
got a blue-green tint, which is also the blue-green with a lot of white added. colors to run through quickly but I do want to demonstrate to you that if you've got some pre-mixed colors ready that this can be quite a lot of fun so this is the red orange tint that I've created by adding a lot of white to it you can see it's less orange than the here one and here is the yellow orange tint with a lot of white to it So I'm just allowing my brush to give me some interesting movement and I'm deliberately leaving some white spaces in between my color application just to help with the contrast again. So now I've only mixed two tones. This is the blue-violet tone and for that you add grey to your color. That completely changes the, the mood of the color. I'm just going to run a thin line of this through my painting. This is the blue green with the gray. Just a, a thin line. And then I've got some shades. Now shades, like I said, is where you add a bit of black to your color. So that will darken it quite a bit. I'm going to check in with you guys now. I just want to get this on the canvas. It's almost an indigo blue that happens here, which is beautiful. So this is the red-orange shade with the black added to it and that is the most beautiful, beautiful brown, like a rust brown, but still very orange. I'll just see what the canvas is asking of me while I'm adding color and I do try to be intentional about my mark making there and it's okay if some of the colors cross over each other that creates a lot of visual interest continuing to twist my brush like thin and thick spaces. Are you guys still with me? The last one is my yellow orange with a bit of black in it and that happened to create the most beautiful gold or yellow ochre. Add some of 
see here. And because it's it's runny in consistency, it's easier to create organic lines or shapes. Well, so you can see how this color scheme really works because all of these colors are related in some way or is in contrast in some way but in in a way where the color wheel has um, promised me that this will work because it is absolutely balanced according to the color wheel so that is very exciting what are you guys thinking please feel free hi sondra uh, please feel free to type in any questions that you might have in the chat i will see them afterwards and i will answer them so you can see how we can play with this uh, same color scheme and just repeat um, the same process over the entire canvas and create a very very interesting um, underpainting over which we can then begin to design something. Now I wanted to show you some of my paperwork on that side as well because it is just such fun. Now this is a tissue or a serviette paper that I got from my grocery store and I've just taken off the backing which is another layer of plain tissue paper so what you are left with is just the print or the design um, in fact I might even be able to pull off another layer but I think this is just two ply and the next thing that you need is also your gel medium and I also like to dispense it into a little cup just to give myself a container to work in and one of the other advantages is then if your phone rings or you are called away from your painting, then you can just quickly put your lids on and preserve the color that you've mixed that you have left so that you don't waste a lot of product. So again, I would just like to show you how runny the um, gel medium is. So it really is a liquid. So this becomes my liquid glue. And I'll just have that handy. With the brush so what you can do is um, you can just take your tissue paper this is also not groundbreakingly revelationary new you've probably seen many artists do this multimedia 